You ready to go? All right, let's load up. You ready to go? Ready to go. <laughs> My chauffeur. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> there you go. So we are in the car headed to Clinton. Clinton. So that is a ways from us. I mean, it's not, it's about 35, 40 minutes away from us. And we are headed there to pick up, you wanna tell? Some beef. <laughs> we bought a half a cow, which ends up being around 300 pounds of beef. That is a lot. Uh, we are gonna head and go pick it up from the butchers and then when we get back home, we're gonna talk to you guys about why we chose to do this, how we source out our protein. Uh, and we're just really excited. This has been a video that we've been meaning to make for a long time. We actually just recently bought a half a pig uh, from a friend of ours. And so this is kind of how we source out all of our stuff. And we're gonna talk to you guys a bit more in depth about that. But right now, let's head to go pick it up. Someone asked the other day, people who travel with regular coffee cups and not travel coffee cups, why do you do that? Coffee tastes better out of a hand-thrown mug. So I responded because I'm a diva and will only drink from handmade pottery. And the girl replied back and she's like, I would expect nothing less of you. <laughs> saying I'm a diva. <laughs> I'm just saying it takes skill to drive with a handmade mug instead of a travel mug. We have just arrived. What's, what's wrong? Put the bag of trash. Oh no. <laughs> Look at your hair. She's like, get me out of the seat. <laughs> Char, what are we doing here? Picking up meat. Picking up meat. What kind of meat are we picking up? Um, cow meat. Do you know what that is? Um, it's beef. So beef comes from a cow. Um, what comes from a pig? Bacon. <laughs> Bacon and pork. Yeah. <laughs> Will it not fit? Will it not fit? Yeah, I tried to lift one of those boxes and it was so heavy. So we actually had to buy a deep freeze. <laughs> we have several deep freezes. Uh, this one's just full of like our vegetables. Um, this one has most of our pork. Uh, this one has more meat, but we had to buy this one for the cow. Oh my gosh, and we still have boxes out there. Got three more boxes. What up is that? This is sausage. Yeah. <laughs> so we are down this is our laundry room mud room it's where i store most of all my canned goods obviously we have all of our freezers out here and y'all know we don't have a lot of protein on our farm that we raise uh, we have got our rabbits which are for meat uh, and in the spring, we are getting meat chickens that we have ordered from Murray McMurray. Uh, but all the other meat that we do, we have to source out. And honestly, that's kind of been a struggle for the last few years. We've been able to source out pork uh, pretty easily, but beef in our area, particularly for grass-fed beef, it is really hard to find. The farmers who do, you know, end up butchering their, uh, their cows, they sell them all like well in advance. Also, they're pretty expensive. And so beef is just one of those things we do not eat a lot of because we have a hard time sourcing it ethically. 
uh, where it was raised ethically, you know, grass fed, not finished, you know, on grain or, you know, had any antibiotics or anything. And those are, you know, things that are really important to us. Now, in the past, we have ordered from Butcher Box because um, we haven't been able to source it out. So when we've had our beef or wanted steaks or something like that, uh, we've ordered from Butcher Box. I'll put a link down below. We actually really enjoyed them. We know a lot of people who use them. And that was a good kind of, you know, uh, in between place for us. But we really wanted to find something local. Um, and we get asked a lot of questions. Do you not have any, you know, larger livestock on your farm? We don't actually have the space to raise a larger animal in the way that we feel comfortable, which would be grass fed. And so this is kind of what we do. <laughs> it's okay. A WD-40. <laughs> So this is kind of what we do. This is how we bring in, you know, protein on our farm because we do eat a lot of meat. Uh, we just try to source it out the best way. So Nathan, do you want to actually come over here for just a second? <laughs> so, hey. <laughs> We have been trying to find beef. The person that we know that does beef, they always sell out. I'm talking about the Lewises. They're great friends of ours. And so Nathan just kind of started putting fillers around and was asking people, hey, if you know anyone selling a half a cow, you know, which is what we got. We got a half a cow, which ended up being like around 300 pounds. Do you want to kind of explain to them how you found uh, these people? And it actually was just, they turned out to be a really, really sweet couple. Yeah, it was actually a God thing uh, yeah. because every resource I had was kind of shut in my face, um, you know, for several months. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone said, well, I can get you one, but it'll be October, November, December. And, and I was uh, telling them, too, the prices were, Yeah, I mean, you know, we're not cheap. They're not cheap. Um, they're virtually all similar. Um, but happened to see a good friend of mine from church at Sam's Club one day. <laughs> And it was a God thing. He was like, yeah, I just bought a half a beef. And I was like, really? And uh, he said, yeah, um, there's another half for sale. Do you want it? And I was like, well, let me come ask the boss first. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I want it. And so anyways, it, it was just, it was a God thing, really. You yeah. know, I was just telling him how we bought a half a hog and that's what led to that conversation mm -hmm. so thank you jamie duncan if you want so. <laughs> yeah so it is a bit of an investment up front so we ended up it was around five dollars a pound which for you know just your ground beef might seem high but for the things like your steak and you know your roast what all did you get oh man a half a, a half a cow so. right yeah but we didn't get a lot of that in ground beef is what i'm saying right so yeah you know when it comes to the ribeyes and the sirloins mm -hmm. and you know your different steaks um finding those for five dollars a pound is impossible yeah so. and they were grass-fed they didn't do any antibiotics and i know a lot of people in our area they're kind of i, I don't want to say bad because i don't think they're bad people but they say that they're grass-fed which they are but they finish them on grain and they do not uh specify that and so that's what we were running into with where we were sourcing out uh some of our pork before is it's like oh yeah they're grass-fed but they finished on grain and like we wanted just true 100 percent grass-fed and that was hard yeah. uh, to find so it is a bit of an investment up front but when you think about you know okay we're going to set aside this much money to be able to do this when we think about what it would cost us to be able to do this and we just don't have the size here to do that uh, comfortably it makes sense for us and so I really wanted to do this video I'll go in depth and I'll show you guys some of the different cuts of meats and things like that but I know a lot of you guys maybe are in a similar season as us as we're maybe you're not on your permanent farm or homestead and you're wanting to do things sustainably you want to have protein that was grown ethically and you can feel good about and you don't have the space what do you do we really encourage you guys reach out to the people in your community you'd be surprised the farmers that you know i mean a lot of cattle farmers they're not butchering them just for their family they butcher them and they sell them and that's how their farm survives and so like he said doors got slammed in our face quite often especially with the beef the beef was just really hard for us to source out keep asking there you know once you have good grass-fed protein it's hard to go back to there is no going back there has yeah. been several occasions where he has like grabbed something at the store and i've just been like 
I can't eat this. The taste is so different. So I just really want to encourage you guys, if you're in a similar season of wanting to source out protein, maybe you don't have the space on your farm. We don't have the space on our farm, so we're cranking out what we can. You know, our rabbits are meat rabbits. We're going to be doing meat chickens in the spring, uh, which was another reason why we tried to, you know, buy a bigger... Uh, deep freeze, have more space, but keep asking around. Look at your local community if that even seems a lot, you know, for you guys, or maybe you're not there yet. Butcher Box is a really great option as well. The meat's really good, the price is pretty reasonable. Uh, but let's jump in here and see what all we got. He, I tried to lift one of those boxes and bring it in, y'all, and it was heavy. I was like, nope, I'm gonna leave that for Nathan. All right, so we've got all of these. Oh, this is gonna be so nice. So this is just sausage. That's what all of, oh my gosh, that is. Ooh, look at this. This came from our, the pig that we bought. And it was bacon. This is really, really good bacon too. Over here. We've got more sausage. So this must have all came from our this must have all came from our pig. Um, oh, here we go. Look at this. This looks so good. So we get them from a place called Cypress Valley. Uh, it is in Clinton where we just came from. Yeah, so this whole box is just the ground beef. Let's see what's up here. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at these. Alright, so that says that it is soup bones. That'll be really good. It's heavy. Here's all the steaks. Oh, let me see. That's what, oh my goodness. Look at those. Listen, Nathan was so wanting to have a steak last night and we didn't go get this and he was so disappointed. He's like, by golly, I'm going to get a steak. Look at that. That's a New York strip. That looks good, babe. Did you see these? That there's these beef soup bones? Yeah. What can we do with those? Put them in soup. <laughs> That's all we can do with them. Honestly, I'd, I'd probably grill those. I mean, there's yeah. probably not a whole. Look, so here's marrow. Okay, here, I'll let you get in there and put that up. That's it. Okay. So we've got bones here. Let me get in here. Goodness, this is. We don't have a system. So we got the bones. We'll be making bone broth with this, which we. Uh, use regularly. There's a bunch of stuff in here. What is that stuff? My hands are freezing. See the small bag? Stew meat. This is like Christmas for us, you guys. Okay, so this is like bone stew roast. Yes. And then that's all the stuff. No, this is all ground beef. This is all ground beef. That's the steaks. That's the steaks. Y'all, look at this. We just filled our freezer. That is so incredibly exciting. I think you're probably more excited than I am, huh? I'm super excited. This is more sausage, right? This was all the stuff that we got from the pig. Yeah. And then down there, we've got some hams, we've got some deer, and we've got some more. Chickens. Yeah, we have a ton of whole chicken, so we're gonna have to we'll have to still do some rearranging whenever we butcher our uh, chickens because I still just don't know. Yeah, we're running out of space. Like we don't have a very big mud room here, and most of this is filled with just like all these freezers are filled, which is so amazing. In a time right now, it makes me feel really good. You know what I mean? Don't you think so? Absolutely. Yeah. So this is a very exciting day in the Reagan household. I'm just like, I don't know, I just feel really good. You know what I mean? Like we have been trying to source out our beef for a long time. Now that we have a good supplier, it looks amazing. I can't wait to taste it. I'm sure it's gonna taste amazing. And so that's so exciting. Between the cow and the pork, we got almost 500 pounds of protein y'all that is insane i am so excited i cannot wait to have a good juicy steak tomorrow uh but i just we get asked a lot honestly about our meat where we source it out from 
you know places that we trust we try to buy it all local if possible that's what we do we buy it in bulk uh, you know half a cow a half a pig a whole hog whatever that looks like because it is substantially cheaper it does take us being you know intentional on the front end and saving for that expense but I can guarantee you it's worth it and it is way cheaper buying it like that and just paying to have it processed for the beef they actually paid for the processing fee which also got us a good deal on it um, and so I I encourage you guys to do that if this is something that you're new with and you you know maybe don't know about grass fed and maybe you know you're okay if they're fed out on grain that's fine like take this time if maybe you're wanting to look into that figure out what you're comfortable with what you're not comfortable with you know that way you know what questions to ask for us we always ask do they have antibiotics do you finish them on grain or are they strictly grass fed and those are the things that we know okay we'll draw a line at a certain you know <laughs> there's a there's a time I'm in a place where we draw a line and we know what we feel comfortable with and what we don't. So I encourage you guys, figure out what that is for you guys and know that even if you're not in a space where you can't have all the animals there, that's okay. There are so many other good resources and options in the meantime. Uh, but thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Uh, it is such a good day. Did you see all that meat we got, Charlie? Open the, open the freezer. This one? Yeah. Which way? Just pull it open. Is that a lot of me? <laughs> it's a lot of me. Yeah. What are you most? Come here. What are you most excited about eating? You want me to hold you too? Oh. I'm excited for eating the cow. What about the cow? What's your favorite thing from the cow? Mm, I never eat a cow. Yes, you have. Steak comes from a cow. I like steak. What's your favorite thing to eat though from any animal? Mm. I know what this is. You ate it this morning? No. No? What's your favorite? It's not bacon? No. What is it? Pork chop. Pork chop. <laughs> June, what's your favorite thing? So you're a little bacon snatcher. Wave hi to your friends. <laughs> well, obviously I have my hands full and I am about to get ready to cook lunch. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Thanks for checking out all the meat we brought onto our farm. Such an exciting day, but we will talk to you guys soon. Say bye. Bye. <laughs>